Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another answering your questions Q&A. I'm going to go through some old comments that I've gotten the past two weeks and just kind of chat with you guys a little bit and just converse and let's just chat, shall we? All right, let's get into it. If familiar with these videos, every few weeks I like to sit down and go through some comments that I've gotten, some recent comments on recent videos, sometimes they're recent content comments on older videos and just kind of expand and chat with you guys and answer the questions. Now I do try to be active in responding to comments the past few months it's been very hard. I do tend to each week take a few hours, two or three days and answer comments. So if I don't get to answering comments, I'm very sorry. I am trying to be more um, proactive with that. As I get more free time, I'll be doing it more but I do really like to sit down and talk with you guys. So I don't know how many questions I'm going to answer or how many comments I'm going to address. Usually these videos are either very short or very long. So the first uh, comment that I got is from Sani Bagan, and if I mispronounce your name, please forgive me. This is on my most recent haul video and she comments, how will you use up all of your perfumes? Now this is a very common comment question on any collection that I see when somebody has more than, I would say even 10 bottles of perfume. And I have currently, this is my book that has how many bottles I have currently. Currently, as of right now, I have 835. So I expect, <laughs> I expect uh, to get this question. This is actually a great question. First and foremost, I wear probably about two to three fragrances a day at least, at least. I have a scent I wear in the morning, a scent I wear in the middle of the day, and a scent I wear to bed. I do like to wear my fragrances to bed. So I wear two to three fragrances a day, usually. The fragrances I wear in the morning are, are very, their, their longevity is like lacking. There's like no longevity to these fragrances. These are fragrances that kind of uplift me, lift me up, zip me up, and then usually they disappear off of my skin within an hour or two, or in the mid afternoon if I take a shower, um, clean up, get ready to start my day. Cause I do a lot of clerical stuff in the morning, I'm usually in my pajamas until, you know, around late afternoon, like one or two, just cause you know, I don't really need to not be in my pajamas. My pajamas are very comfy. Uh, and then like, I'll take a shower and I'll get dressed to start my day. And that's when I'll wear my scent of the day. So if you guys follow my Instagram link below, if you guys want to check it out, want to know what I'm wearing every day, I don't know why anyone would, but if you do <laughs> check it out below, um, that's usually the scent that I'll say, hey, this is what I'm wearing today, is the scent I put on after I shower. And then at night when I take my shower, I take two showers a day just because I'm one of those clean freaks, uh, and then I will put on my bedtime scent. And that's usually, normally my bedtime scents are a rotation of Elizabeth Ardent's, the green teas. I really love green tea cucumber to go to sleep, green tea yuzu. Um, and recently, uh, green tea mimosa has been what I've been wearing and loving. So I do go through a lot of different fragrances and I am an oversprayer. So I do prefer to spray about eight to 10 times depending on the fragrance. I don't just blindly spray eight to 10 times. There are some fragrances that it's one spray. One spray is all you need and one spray is all that I do. But if it is a fragrance that doesn't become too strong or too impressive that I really enjoy over spraying. Clementine California is one that I can literally spray 35 times. I don't do it that much, but I could. Um, usually very fresh, vivacious, revitalizing scents are the ones I really like to overspray. Um, about 10 to 12 times. So I do go through a bit of juice. I've also mentioned in the past that I do sell decants of my collection. I don't do it on any website or any uh, thing where it's like, hey, check out my shop here, here are all my decants. There's nothing wrong with people doing that. I just don't. But some people who, you know, know me who have sold decants in the past will kind of shop my collection and will like reach out and be like, hey, you know, can I buy this? You know, can I try this? And I do sell decants of my collection. So I do go through a bit of juice doing that as well. Although I do not do that very often. I probably sell probably decants 
let's say like there's an order, like somebody will reach out and ask me, hey, you know, I would like to buy a few decans of this, probably two to three times a year. Like it's not very often, so. But in regards to going through these fragrances, how I'm gonna go through these fragrances, there's gonna be some bottles I'm not gonna go through. That's just how it works. And there's gonna be some bottles that are going to age and become vintage, um, like vintage fragrances. And there's a big market for vintage fragrance. And no, not every single fragrance on the shelf will last or will um, not go rancid, not go bad, not turn. Uh, but fragrances can go past their best buy date if you keep them and store them properly. And there are some fragrances I've had in my collection, some of these bottles I've had for 20 years, quite literally, and they smell maybe not as bright in the opening, but they smell amazing. And so uh, for me, it's not so much, I'm not worried about using every single drop in these bottles, but I do wear a lot of fragrance. I do review a lot of fragrance and I do uh, go through more juice than somebody might consider. But I don't think it's unacceptable or an irrational question or comment to be like, why the heck, how the heck are you gonna go through all this? The truth of the matter is, is over the course of a year, no, I'm not gonna wear every single fragrance here, but I do go through a lot, a lot of fragrance. So uh, just keep that in mind. But it is not a bad question to ask. It is a very common question. Like Isia, uh, recent review on the flanker to Isia. Um, Live Life says it's Sicily and not Sicily, as you wrote it and pronounced it as Sicily. I know, I'm sorry, I am not very good at pronunciation and sometimes when I type things out, I do it wrong. I will fix that, I'm sorry. And let me just throw this out there, as always guys, if I ever make a mistake in pronunciation, which I do all the time, um, in spelling, anything, please don't, these comments are great. They educate me, they tell, help me be more um, diligent, definitely. Don't ever feel bad calling me out on anything. Thank you for bringing that to my attention and I will fix that. Gas songs on the same video, and this is a little bit different. Your collar necklace is fabulous. Where did you get that? Amazon. So. I love chokers. It's like my favorite style of necklace that in like ridiculously long like necklaces that are like 36 inches or 40 inches long. They're like, just really like to wear either really short necklaces or really long necklaces. Um, so I just ordered from Amazon. You probably noticed a whole bunch of different chokers in my, con in, you know, in my videos the past few weeks. Just from Amazon, like a pack of 12 of them. And they're my filming chokers, so. Uh, some of them I do wear out, most of them I wear to film, just because I, I like it. I think it kind of breaks up this potato face, this thumb kind of look. I know I'm not the most visually appealing reviewer, which is fine. I'm realistic here, people. But I figured like a choker would kind of break up the monotony of flesh tone potato, so. This next comment's very sweet and it was on my last video I did a little over two weeks ago on um, answering questions and it's from Anna Ania and they write and I'm reading from my phone if I'm looking down I know you guys keep saying like well, you don't look up I know I'm sorry I'm trying to get better at looking I don't know where the viewfinder is on this iPad I it's I'm, I'm getting there I need I need help more than just what you guys think I need anyway going into this comment uh they write i am full of admiration for the way you address the questions remarks that may look rude or judgmental you are full of respect and understanding for people who comment on your videos i learned so much from you firstly thank you thank you so much that really it's very sweet of you to say um one thing i will say most 99.9 .9 of my comments you guys who comment on my videos subscribe to my videos watch my videos are so nice and thoughtful and respectful and hold me accountable and that's awesome and like I said I never have any issue with anyone holding me accountable at all there are some people who comment on my video that are kind of rude and that's fine and then there's some people who are trolls and that's fine too and then there's just some people who just like to take YouTube and anybody and I'm not just saying within the fragrance community in any community and just kind of harp and uh, just criticize and poke fun and be mean and whatever and my thought is is when it comes down to it I can only really look at myself and at the end of the day how can I sleep at night 
knowing uh, that I did the right thing. I know when it comes down to YouTube reviewers, uh, most people view us as shills as we're doing this to get attention, we're drama queens, <laughs> we're um, just trying to be self-important, we're trying to get free bottles. Um, I can't speak for anybody else. I can't speak for anybody's ambitions, anybody else's plans for their channels, anybody else's plans for their careers. I can speak for myself is that I started doing YouTube as a way to talk to people and express a passion for the beauty, skincare, and primarily fragrance uh, world that I am obsessed with and love. And I had nobody in my life that would talk to me in the way that I wanted to in regards to fragrance. And I started YouTube and I did fragrance and it, fragrance came months after I got comfortable and confident in front of the camera. I'm still not super there a hundred percent, but it started off as something that was kind of an escape for me, a way to communicate with a community that I've been lurking and watching for years. Now, I don't view YouTube as my career. I'm an artist. I run several different businesses. Uh, YouTube is something that I love to do. It is a hobby, but it is something that I do take very seriously. And that is why I try to treat it with the same respect. So I know that not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone's going to like your face. Not everyone's going to like your attitude. Not everyone is going to like the sound of your voice, what you do with yourself. I don't have a problem if people do not like me for any reason. I have a problem if people are unnecessarily cruel and disrespectful for no reason. Now, me putting myself on YouTube, me reviewing fragrances, and me getting a little bit of AdSense money. I've talked about how much AdSense money I get. It's not that much. It's only a few hundred dollars a month. It's nothing I can quit a job over. Um, but I do get free bottles. I do make a little bit of disposable income that I can spend on more bottles. Those are the perks of YouTube. Now with those perks, there has to be a balance and there's some negatives. So say you have a job and there might be positive aspects to your job and negative aspects to your job. As long as nobody's doing anything unethical or illegal, you know, when it comes down to it, there might be scheduling conflicts or you might not be able to go and do something social that you want to because your job needs you to work. When I'm talking about positives and negatives to a job, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about unethical, illegal, or lawful things that your job might do to you. You know, I'm not saying that. But with YouTube and putting my face to camera, I know that people are going to judge me on my appearance, how I present myself, how I talk, and things like that. Now, I'm not an influencer, and my channel, and I keep saying this, but I feel like I really have to kind of say it as a mantra, I'm not an influencer. My face, my personality, the way that I present myself and my content is not the type of content that's going to get sponsorships or a lot of sponsorships, or it's going to be the type of thing where I can turn into a real influencer, like you see the type of people who can quit their job and live a fabulously luxurious lifestyle and travel and get thousands of dollars of free things a month and free travel and all these luxury items and walk red carpets. That's not that that can't happen within the fragrance community, but that's not my channel. That's not how I market myself. And I don't think that that's what you guys want. And based on my viewership, based on my subscribers, that's not the way this channel's going. My channel grows slow. I don't have a problem with that. I have way more subscribers than I ever thought I'd have and way more subscribers than I deserve. And that's fine. And there's people who have been starting these fragrance channels, um, men and women who have been doing it for like six months who have more subscribers than I do. And I think that is awesome. <laughs> I think that is awesome. I love seeing the fragrance community on YouTube grow and thrive. I know my place, I know my lane, and I am so happy and honored to be able to be a part of this community. And what I ha know, the good that comes with this is being proud of my community, seeing it grow, seeing it flourish. I love, especially love seeing when the female reviewers just thrive and flourish. I love seeing new female reviewers just killing it or people who've been doing it for so long finally starting to get the subscribers and recognition that they deserve. It just means the world to me. I think it's fantastic. 
but I know that even though I'm not an influencer, even though I'm not one of the fragrance celebrities, and that's fine, that is not my channel, that is not my mission, that is not what I'm trying to do, I know that even though I'm not a big channel, I'm a tiny channel, that there is still criticism that comes with anybody that has any type of viewership, be it 10 subscribers or over a million subscribers on YouTube. People are going to have real opinions and kind of like all the perks that I get with having this channel in regards to getting a little bit of AdSense, just a few hundred dollars a month, um, to getting free bottles, to have, being able to collaborate on projects, um, having a fragrance collaboration, being able to uh, travel for a one event, which is a lot of fun, um, building friendships. There is going to be some negative to that. And the negative with YouTube is going to be commentators, people who criticize, people who don't like YouTube fragrance reviewers and who uh, bully them and troll them and write hateful comments and hateful posts about them. And my thought of it is, truly how I feel about it is that if they are criticizing my channel and my content and my face, I'm okay with it, personally. I don't have a problem with people criticizing or judging me based on how I present myself to you guys. This is what you guys are seeing. This is the face that I'm putting out there. That has to do with how I do my makeup. That has to do with how I do my hair. That has to do with how I pronounce or mispronounce things that can be considered terribly um, disrespectful. And that can also uh, come down to just people thinking I do a bad job, <laughs> you know, that's fine. But what I do learn by taking this seriously and respecting myself and this hobby is not retaliating in a way that I find to be disrespectful. Treating everybody, people who are holding me accountable respectfully, people who are being rude and spiteful, or people that are being wonderful and supportive. Everybody deserves respect. If you don't want to give me respect, that's fine. I can't change that. I can't do anything about that. But I know what I can do, which is treat you guys with respect. No, I don't mind if people are rude to me. I don't mind if people are mean to me. I kind of laugh at, laugh at all. But for the most part, when it comes down to tr talking to, how do I put this? I'm doing that thing where I'm like not talking and I'm looking at the floor and that's what I do, hi. Uh, when it comes down to treating everybody with respect, I try to teach, treat everybody with respect if they are coming to me with respect. Now, coming at me and calling me a drama queen, telling me to stay in my lane, I don't really view that as being disrespectful. People are responding to my content, people are responding to uh, me and what I'm presenting out there, and they might genuinely just think that I'm, you know, a narcissist or I'm a sociopath or, you know, I'm a drama queen and I want all the attention on me. I mean, I don't think that there's anything wrong with people thinking that with anyone that kind of does what I do, you know? So I'm not going to sit here and be like, how dare you, <laughs> you know? But if you tell me that you want to punch me in the face because the sound of my voice, that's a little different. <laughs> and those are the people that are not going to get respect. I'm sorry, violence is not the answer. But when it comes down to answering harder comments, when it comes down to answering questions, when people have kind of been a little bit less nice kind of kitty gloves off at me. I know that's the territory of doing this. And just because people might be coming at me a little bit more, you know, strongly doesn't mean that I should or they deserve to be disrespected because maybe they didn't do something to be disrespectful. Maybe they truly are coming from a place of, you know, accountability and, you know, they're just really fed up with YouTube reviewers and I'm the channel that they decided to uh, unleash their wrath upon and you know if you watch so many different reviewers and you're just tired of us you know I understand I might be that one channel that you feel comfortable venting with and if so let's do it vent let me know what you hate that's okay it doesn't mean people deserve to be treated with disrespect and I do my best to treat everybody with the most respect possible in regards to commenting and responding to questions and comments, even some of the harder ones that push and put me in a bad light. But at the end of the day, I'm a person and I'm only responsible for my own actions. 
And the best I can do is to treat everybody with respect and dignity. And I'm thankful that you noticed that. So thank you. Last and not least, it's from Eva. And this is from the Sense from a Hat video. And Eva writes, I love this series and would absolutely support the options of getting even more out there. Uncouth sense for afternoon tea, contemplative sense for leaving a party early. I definitely am going to be writing up some new things. And I'm glad that some people like this series because some people take it too seriously and they think that I'm being serious. So let me reiterate, any sense from a hat video is pure fun, comedy, do not take it, don't take any of my videos seriously, please, please. I'm here for your entertainment. I'm not an expert, I'm not an authority, obviously. <laughs> I think we can look at my channel and my content and say, oh, obviously. But I do, I am glad that a lot of people seem to really like it. They understand that it's lighthearted, it's fun, it's not to be taken seriously. And it's a bit of a challenge for me too, because I do approach these lists and try to be as serious with them as possible. But obviously slippery fragrances and social distancing at a grocery store lists are to be taken with the tiniest grain of salt. <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoy them. I do really love doing them. But that is it. Those are all the questions I'm going to answer today. Thank you so much to everyone who has commented. If I didn't get to your comment, I'm so sorry. I am try and do these every, at least every two weeks, maybe a little bit more frequently if I get more comments. A lot of my videos recently, most people have just been saying, I really want to try this and hi, how's your mom doing? So there wasn't too many comments to kind of go back and answer, but I did think that I answered some. I hope you guys liked my my little video. I hope you guys like these videos. I like doing them. In any case, guys, I'm going to start just going to stop chatting your ear off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.